Hey besties, right now we're at the New York State Fair and I wanna say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. Have you ever felt lost or unsure of where to go in life? Like wandering through a giant maze with no direction? Well, I personally have been there and what helped me during those difficult times was being able to confide in somebody. I'm talking about therapy. And that's why I'm so excited to announce the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online platform with a mission to provide accessible and affordable support for those navigating life's challenges. Gone are the days of settling for just any therapist within your area. BetterHelp makes it easy. Getting started is as simple as answering a few questions. BetterHelp will quickly match you with a therapist tailored to your needs. Whether you're searching for your life's purpose or simply need a bit of direction, BetterHelp is here to walk you through every step of the way. Just click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood to get 10% off your first month. And there's an added perk. With BetterHelp, changing therapists is seamless and doesn't come with any extra charges or insurance complexities. So why wait? Go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood to start your journey to a more clear path today. Now onto the show. In this video, we're living and eating with Ethiopia's extraordinary Dorze tribe, a tribe whose unique diet means they could eat an entire cow raw. I still can see some of the food that was in the cow's stomach. Yeah, that's food of them. And now it's our food. Yeah. But first, let's back up. Yeah! We've left Ethiopia's capital of Addis Ababa and arrived in the Gamo Highlands with an elevation of over 8,500 feet. Here, the unique geography and available plant species dictate the distinct Dorze diet. I've seen a lot of animals slaughtered in a lot of African villages and it's always completely unpredictable. From cattle all the way to this region's most life-giving plant, known as the false banana. This is our main dish and it's a backbone for Dorze tribe. Today, I'm on a mission to live life as a Dorze tribe member, touring their fascinating homes. The cows actually reside within the home. Why do you keep the cows in the house? And sharing in their meals. That's so much boil. No matter how challenging they may be. This is gonna be the most smelly, like powerful organ in the animal. It all starts with breakfast. I'm so happy to be here. How do you feel? We are very happy too. Guiding me through this day of eating, Kuru, son of the village chief who sits beside him. Next to me, his mother, the cook who crafted this common morning meal. Right here we have a tremendous breakfast. It looks like a big tortilla. Would you call this bread? This we call it kocho. And this is made from something called false banana. Yeah. This is the false banana tree, and this is no ordinary plant. This tree can feed cattle. It can create clothing for people. It can build houses 20 feet high. And it can feed hungry bellies. But stealing calories from this false banana tree isn't as easy as, well, picking a banana. Here's how it works. You can use the stalk or the trunk of the tree, which is what this is, peel this part off. Do we do anything with this? This will be food for the cutters. With the false banana trunk firmly affixed to a wooden plank, our cook employs a rolling pin to grind the inner contents. It's like these amazing cell walls that have big gaps in between. This is what you eat? Yeah. This is when we scratch it, the culture is from. When they shave it, there is a strong fiber. So that's fiber, that's the leftover. We use it to make ropes, sacks, traditional hats. Next, she extracts the liquid from the starchy matter and gives it a mint. From here, you have to wait at least three months to eat it, ensuring that it reaches the perfect state of fermentation. After treatment, when you put it longer, the longer is better. How many months do you prefer to have it fermented? She doesn't speak English. I know, but that's why you translate for me. <laughs> yeah. Because you speak English. <laughs> It's uh, more than a year. That is quite an investment, and it doesn't even get you drunk. Today, we break our fast with an eight-month fermented false banana pancake. The fermented pulp is hydrated with fresh water, then kneaded into a dough. She flattens the dough, then cooks it over a raging hot steel pan. It's like a thick wheat tortilla. Mm. It's like a less sweet version of fruit by the foot. Oh, it tastes like dried apple, but with a completely different texture. This bread is either dipped in a fresh honey or a hot chili sauce. I'm gonna go with the honey first. 
You can definitely tell that's a local honey. It's almost coarse, very sugary. The longer we sit here, the more the local bees are figuring out that their honey is right here. They're swarming around us now. So I'm gonna put this in the chili. This spice is made out of chili pepper, garlic, black cumin, and a little amount of ginger on it. It's a good combination, but this is a bit hot for you. Oh, you think I can't handle it? You can try. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. That was a mistake. The chilies here have a very bold, almost bitter flavor to them. Holy cow. Ooh, you have some intense chilies here. The Dorsey population stands today at only about 30,000. Kuru's village is a close knit community of 70 families. Here in this village, we are 650 people. I know you cultivate food, but you also have some animals too. All right. We eat uh, chicken, goats, sheep. To express my appreciation for the village's hospitality, I've offered them a revered animal, traditionally reserved only for ceremonies. <laughs> We will slaughter a cow. You've collected the blood. This man here is like washing it with leaves. What is the purpose of this? And unite the community in a joyous feast. This one's awesome. Can I have this recipe? This all sounds great on paper. Then Kuru told me this. We eat raw. What are the parts that are eaten raw? The stomach, the heart, and the liver, and also that is a pie. Okay. The slaughtering process has begun. I've seen a lot of animals slaughtered in a lot of African villages. The process can change so much from place to place. It can vary from slashing the neck to suffocating the animal. So right now they're tying up the back legs. Most likely they're gonna tip it over and then that's gonna give them some leverage to move on the cow. <laughs> The best part about the slaughter is there's always some village elder telling the younger guys they're doing it wrong. That's what's happening right now. Once they have leverage on the cow, they can pull its head back, exposing its neck, and then that's that. They cut half the neck and they realize they don't have a bowl for the blood. Never a boring day in the office. Typically, beef is only consumed here during the Christian holidays of Mezcal and Christmas, meaning this is a very special occasion. The preparation starts with the most perishable parts. You've collected the blood. This man here is like washing it. What is the purpose of this? When you put it longer, it will be attached to each other. When we cook it, it will be one piece. Are these special plants that you're using? This is a false banana leaf. Oh, that's a false banana leaf? Yeah. It's also an anticoagulant, it turns out. Under the skilled hands of the Dorze ladies, the cow blood will soon transform beyond recognition and join our menu. This dish literally contains blood, sweat, and my tears. On the other hand, the liver requires almost no preparation at all. All right, so he's cutting off a big chunk and cutting that into smaller, more manageable chunks. You know, in our culture, first the king starts to eat, so we will wait for him. Yeah. So I'm not in a rush, actually. I just love it. He just eats it like it's nothing, no big deal. You know, I used to think this was really strange, and now I just think it's a little bit strange. Yeah, I've grown over time. Should I stop talking? Just eat, right? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's soft. You can literally feel the tissue breaking apart on your teeth as you chew through it. That's the most unique part. The taste is very irony. It's cooled down. Sometimes if you eat it really quickly, you can still feel the warmth of the animal. That can be disconcerting. I could see how this could be a treat out here because this is something you have the opportunity to eat like once a year. Like when I was broke, I got to eat sushi once a year. And this is a little bit like raw salmon in texture. Let's finish this. This is last. Oh, that's so kind, man. Does the king want it though? The liver was just a warm up. Now we're sitting down to a true raw meat feast with the chief and Kuru's sister. On here we have meat. That's something I already experienced in Addis Ababa. They're eating the raw meat like this. But we also have heart, we have kidneys, and we have the stomach. I still can see some of the food that was in the cow's stomach. And now it's our food. Yeah. Yeah. These will soon be eaten with a local dipping sauce they claim is twice as good as ranch. This Dorze hot sauce was made just a moment ago, but it's not complete yet. It needs to have some of this right here. This is the bile sack full of bitter green bile. You're gonna mix some of this into our hot sauce, is that right? Yeah. So he's cutting open the bile sack now. I think he'll just put a few drops on there, I'm hoping. That's a shitload. I think we should start with the kidney. Kidney, heart, then stomach last. 
I like that you cut these into tiny pieces. That's really helpful for me. Ooh, the bile is sitting right on top of this hot sauce. Throw it back. Can we use the bread from the first part now? Sure, where's the bread? I would literally eat anything right now to help with that taste. That is wild. No, I love the spice. I love the hot sauce. It's very spicy. It's got a powerful kick, but the bile is so bitter. So you know, the bile is good for headache. But that's tough. You only kill the cow once or twice a year. <laughs> so if it's like, hey, I have a headache, just wait three months. Yeah. All right, so you're slicing through the heart. This is my first time having raw beef heart. This thing is pretty massive. The bile is terrifying, but tantalizing at the same time. It's like a car crash. It's like I look at it, but I can't look away. Mm. It's a bit tester for me. The heart feels a little bit softer than everything else so far. I can't say I would eat this every Tuesday, but I'm coming around. There's so much meat here. There's so much food. Could you eat all this raw meat for one meal? Could you fill your stomach just on this? Oh, this for many people. Share it with everybody. Yeah. I can get down with that. I think we should move on to this right here. That's a big stomach. You know, I used to weigh 136 kilograms. My stomach used to look like that. The texture of this stomach, it looks like a bathroom rug. There's a section from the outside of the stomach, so you peel that part out. Yeah, this is a very fat one. Wow, this is wild. The stomach is very thick, much thicker than I expected. It's really gamey, so it has kind of a bile slash manure type smell to it. Even when we cook it, the smell will be more bad from this. Well, you're quite the salesman. The smell is bad, but don't worry. Good for when we cook it, it'll be worse. It's like trying to bite through cartilage or something. Oh, and it's... Sorry, it's just... Yeah, it's really intense. Every bite I take, the stomach acids are gushing out of the stomach. And so if it was cooked or maybe washed a bit more, it might be different. I like this guy right here, just chilling. He seems to love it. I love it more than me, this one. It's a good for our health. So mostly you care about the health. Yeah. It's like taking cough medicine. It's not supposed to taste good. It's supposed to make you feel better. When do I start feeling better? After 12 hours. Okay, and I only had one bite. Is that enough to feel better? You can eat it more. Yeah, that's good. So this is how the food tastes raw, but soon we'll see what happens when they add a little heat. We are outside and cooking is underway. Right now we're making an iconic dish known as shucha cha cha. It starts with oil and then they're gonna put in some onion right here. Now I know what you're thinking. Earlier, we had that blood that was massaged with herbs so it wouldn't coagulate. You're wondering, hey, what'd they ever do with that blood? Well, it's gonna be used pretty darn soon. Here we go. All at once, hitting the onions, hitting the hot oil. I'm curious to see what happens when you take this liquefied blood and mix it with oil. Is it gonna harden? Is it gonna become crumbly? We're finding out right now in real time. I know the smoke, right? Is it, yeah, for me too. I was actually getting nostalgic because I had something similar in Zimbabwe. Smoke, the That's fantastic. I'm supposed to have tears, right? Oh, that's so painful. While gasping for air amidst the smoky chaos, I can't wrap my head around how the same cooking process occurs indoors. Right now, we're inside a traditional Dorze house, a house unlike any I've seen before. This is kind of a communal area. Yeah, the living room. Is this where most of the cooking takes place? When the rain is rain, we cook in the house, if, which is not rain season, we cook outside. With bamboo walls and false banana leaf roofs, the Dorze houses mimic the look of the mighty elephant. <laughs> Inside, bedrooms skirt the edge, encircling the cooking area. This entire structure is strengthened by the constant flow of swirling smoke, standing strong for up to 80 years. As night falls and the fire dies out, the residents seek another source of heat, the cattle. Behind me, this is the cow's quarters. How many cattle do you have in your house? Here's the three cattle. That's when you go to another house. The place is good enough for more than five, six cows. By tucking a barn inside their home, the Dorsey people rely on the warm breath of their cows, warming the house through the chilly nights. Is it true that cows sleep standing up? They stand up. I want to give that a try tonight because I lay down, didn't help. Now back to the outdoor kitchen. Our walk of blood has thickened into a blood crumble, ready for some new ingredients. Right here we have intestines that have already been boiled. Oh, nothing better with blood than minced intestine. Whoa, I thought that was it, we're not done yet. Look, another ingredient. This looks like coarse salt. I gotta say, so far my favorite thing about this dish is that it's cooked. 
Impressive. With a generous cascade of beef butter, our first cooked protein of the day is ready to be devoured. Two village elders join us for a delightful taste of this mysterious mash. So this is injera bread. Yeah. When I was in the city, it was topped with much different ingredients. But here, we've got the blood crumble, we have the intestine. Please, show the way. And now you can take a piece. So grab some injera bread, scoop up some blood, scoop up some intestines, throw it back. Mmm. You see the, the happiness wash over her face? <laughs> it's fantastic. I actually think this is going to be good. This is a test you also from the stomach. Mm, the bread is very sour, and the blood is a bit meaty. There's some kind of flavor in there that tastes like fermented cheese. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just the combination of the injera and the blood together, but that's fascinating. Now I'm gonna scoop up some of the intestine. This is an irresponsible amount right here, but I'm going for it. I don't know why it tastes cheesy. It's like the flavor is familiar, but the way we got there is something I've never seen before. God, it has such a unique flavor, unique texture. I think I like it. How do you say yummy in your language? Males. Oh, males? <laughs> this is such a fascinating country because, you know, Addis Ababa is a booming city. It's becoming more and more modern, buildings sprouting up right and left, and then you go not that far from the city, and you're out here, one of the most beautiful places I've seen in Africa. Nay in the world. And this village feels very traditional. It feels very much like it might have seemed or felt long ago. I'm curious, for you two women especially, how has life changed here from the time you were a child until now? You know, the people, they don't send their school, their kids. They stay in their home, they stay in their field. But now, the children, they go to their school. And there was no electricity. There's no wild animal ski. And now they wear the traditional clothes. In ancient times, the people, they walk far away. Because now they use as a transport. Vision. Now the males cook, but before it was not allowed to arrive even to the kitchen. I feel like they're so oppressive towards men. <laughs> but now finally men have been given the equal freedom to cook. For generations, the Dorsey livelihood has depended on their exceptional farming and weaving skills. But these days, it's a lot more dependent on these. Tourists stopping by at all hours of the day to roam the village and tour the houses. But what do locals think about being part of a living museum? Do you wish you could go back to the old way where people just left you alone? I'll find out soon. But first, there's a feast to prepare. So we are back in the kitchen right now with the most iconic food of this village. This is the false banana stock right here. And this is going to be part of our soup or our stew. She's slicing it very thin right now. And I'm told you can actually eat it just like this while it's raw. Quick, quick, quick. Um, can I grab some of this? And can I share some with you here? And she doesn't know what's happening. And wait, wait, no, no, we're going to eat it. It feels a little bit like celery. It tastes like a radish that has no spice. Horseradish minus one horse. Interesting. Oh, please continue, ichi ichi. I speak a little bit of the local tribal language. It's not a big deal. This is the making of amicho. The recipe couldn't be more straightforward. Potatoes, chopped in halves and tossed into a cooking base. False banana roots, or amicho, strut their stuff alongside. Finally, thin sliced false banana trunk and Ethiopian kale interlaced with beef fill up the vessel. This looks amazing. Look at all this food. With the food ready and the table set, the entire village gathers for the much awaited feast. What is this part right here? This is the root part. You can take a piece, one of it. Please, if you want to eat. Me the, me the. Please, me the, me the. <laughs> please, please enjoy it. Oh. It's so different. This is very starchy. It reminds me kind of of a yam, but a very neutral flavor, almost no flavor. So compared to the bile and the raw organs, this is almost nothing. So this one I saw them making in the house and I saw her chopping up the stock. Oh, that's fantastic. It is like an unusual type of mashed potato with spinach mixed in that's very spicy and a lot of cumin flavor. Yeah. I really like it. I did not expect this at all today. It's something so new. I've never had anything like this anywhere else in Africa. Can I open an Ethiopian restaurant in the USA? Yeah. We have a little false banana. We have a, I'll need a lot of false banana. Probably yeah. all that are in the USA. <laughs> yeah. This is kikir. The preparation of this meat pile requires the force of a cooking army. It starts with mountains of chopped meat and onions. The onion hits the pot first with a generous sprinkle of turmeric powder. 
next chunks of succulent cow meat and bones. Finally, piles of finely chopped beef complete the savory blend. Oh, I just grabbed a rib. Is there another rib for backup? It's for the camera. Trust me, I'm not selfish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I, I saw that. Beef ribs, Dorze style. Yeah. Okay. It's been brazen for a bit, a little bit chewy, and a much more subtle flavor. It's much more about the beef flavor coming out. Yeah. It's salty, a bit of turmeric, but that's it. How is it? How do you like it? It's very tasty. I like it, she said. You know, I want to ask a little bit more about this village. I noticed that these days, sometimes you have tourists stopping by the village. How old were you when tourists first started coming to this village? When he was 45 years, we saw the tourists where they was in the car. But they don't meet with the tourists. 53 something, they start to visit the village. Mm -hmm. And these days, you have tourists coming by several times a day. And so, do you see it as this lifeline, this way to make money for the community? Or do you wish you could go back to the old way where people just left you alone? Look, but I'm there alone. Now it's better. Any people, they like it when there's tourists coming because this is a business for them. Selling clothing and yeah, stuff they like sell, that. Yeah, the people, they change their life. When they get some money from the tourists, they build their house and they change their clothes. That's better for them. Well, listen, I want to say thank you so much for allowing us also into your community and for me to be able to see a different way of life, a new tribe, new people, and it was absolutely a treasure. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to Beffers.shop today. Or when the rain is raining, it is start to leaking through the house. We renew the roof part. We do that in the USA too. Which is made out of what? We rarely use false banana in the USA for the rooftop. For you, do you like this one? Uh. Yes, I like it, she says. Is that how you say yes? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it means yes. Uh, How much does one cow cost? Which is depend on the size. But the biggest one, it's which is up to 55,000. Today, will we slaughter a medium one or a big one? Not the biggest one. So it's not small. It's not small. It's not huge. It's not the very huge. But it's like pretty big. It sounds like me on a dating app talking to a girl. Boom, guys, that is the end of this video. Video number two here in Ethiopia, hanging out with the Dorze tribe all day. It was such an honor and such a new experience. Africa never stops amazing me every time I come here. The new foods, the new ingredients, and how resourceful people are with what they have. It's incredible. Stick around, because this series is heating up. We will be visiting three more tribes here in Ethiopia, and it's going to get wild. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. Did I mention that it's like 7,000 feet of elevation here? It's so hard to breathe. Oh, a dog. Okay.